Hi there, welcome back for another lesson. In this lesson, we will go over three examples of um, calculations involving concentrations expressed as a percentage. So there are three cases to look at. The first one involves a ratio mass over mass. So the mass of solute is related to a mass of solution. The problem says, determine the percent composition by mass of a 500 gram salt solution which contains two grams, it should say, of salt. So the smaller mass obviously should be the mass of solute, right, because it's included inside the total mass of the solution, of the mixture. So let's list our, inf our, our information first. As usual, it will simplify your life while you're writing a test because you will get a bunch of problems involving different equations and it might become confusing. So by listing your information, you'll be able to determine which equation you're supposed to be using. So we have a mass of solute, which is mass number one. It's two grams. And we have a mass of solution, M2, which is 500 grams we are looking for the concentration expressed as a percentage. So if I replace in my equation, I'm gonna have two grams over 500 grams times 100% because we want to transform this ratio into a percentage and we will get 0.4%. Now, if I do significant figures, this number here is the smallest one with one digit. So my answer should have only one digit. It's already the case, we're good. So that's case number one, mass over mass. Case number two, we have a mass over a volume. So it says, how many grams of sugar are contained in 30 milliliters of a solution if the concentration of the solution is 35.6%? You'll notice two things. First of all, for significant figures, there's a dot here meaning that the zero is significant. It's not just a, an estimate. And also you have M over V. In other words, they're telling you what kind of ratio you have. You have a mass of solute over a volume of solution. So if the equation was not provided, you would know based on this information which equation you're actually supposed to use. You could also figure it out by knowing that you're looking for a number of grams, which involves a mass, and the other amount given, which is the amount of solution, is expressed as a volume. So clearly, you're using a ratio of mass over volume. So if I list my information, my mass of solute is what I am looking for. I put a one, but I didn't have to. Volume of, so mass of solute, volume of solution, 30 milliliters. I don't need to put the dot now because I know that the zero is significant. The concentration is provided. It's 35.6%. If I replace in my equation, I will have mass over 30 ml times 100% is equal to 35.6%. Now, if you don't like to solve this, you can rewrite it and put it this way, 30 ml at the bottom, and you're gonna take this percentage and bring it over here to the other side of the equation, so you get 35.6% over 100%. And by doing this, it becomes simpler to solve. All you have to do is cross multiply to find your missing uh, amount, your variable here, the value of your variable. So your mass, if I do 35.6 times 30 divided by 100, the mass will be 10.68 grams. Now, if we do significant figures, the smallest number is 30 ml with two significant figures. So this is way too long. I can only keep two digits, which implies that I will have to round this number to 11 grams. So your final answer would be 11 grams if you have to take into account significant figures depending on which science class you're taking. So that was case number two. If we look at case number three, 
Case number three involves a ratio of volume over volume. And it says, rubbing alcohol may be prepared by taking 700 ml of isopropyl alcohol and adding sufficient water, so we're diluting it, right, to obtain 1,000 ml of solution. What will be the concentration, percent, volume over volume of this solution? So clearly they're telling you that you have two volumes involved, volume of solute, volume of solution. V1, volume of solute, that's the alcohol part. We have 700 ml of it. V2, which is the final mixture, we have 1,000 ml. And we're looking for the concentration expressed as a percentage. If I replace over here, I get 700 ml over 1,000 ml times 100% is equal to my concentration. So my concentration is equal to 70%. Now, if I do my significant figures, my smallest number is 700 with three significant figures. This is too short. So actually, I need to add a zero to make it as precise. So I'm gonna put 0.0. .0 to make my answer as precise as the least precise of my measurements. Okay, so I know it looks silly, but that's the way it works. We want our answer to be as precise, so with three digits, so it's as precise as my least precise measurement, which also had three digits. So that was case number three. Now, there's one more thing I want to talk about. In some problems, they will give you a concentration in grams per liter, but you're asked to solve basically using a percentage equation. So you need to convert your concentration from grams per liter into percent. How do I do this? Well, a concentration expressed in grams per liter, we know that one liter contains 1,000 milliliters. So we'd have a certain mass over 1,000 milliliters. We need to express this as a percentage. A percentage is always something over 100. So essentially, we're trying to go from 1,000 ml to 100 ml at the denominator. How do we do this? Well, we would divide by 10, right? So if I divide my denominator by 10, logically, I have to divide the top part by 10 as well to be consistent. So that's more or less what I'm doing. Now, let's take a look at an actual example with real numbers, something easy, such as 10 grams per liter or 10 grams per 1,000 ml. Okay, so I'm trying to convert this into a percentage. Well, again, I'm going from 1,000, which is the equivalent of one liter, to 100, which is the equivalent of a percentage. So I'm dividing this by 10. If I divide the top by 10, I will get one gram. So one gram per 100 ml or 1%. I could also solve by cross multiplying. 10 times 100 divided by 1000 will give me one. So again, one over 100 is the equivalent of 1%. So that's all I need to do in order to convert something that's in grams per liter into a percentage. Once you understand the relationship between the two, you can convert just about anything back and forth. So I hope this helped. If you have any questions, post them in the comment section below. And otherwise, I will see you for your next lesson. Until then, take care.